Hey everyone, Brad here with Rev Robotics, and I'm joined today by Ezra from our customer success team. Hi everyone. Today we're going to dig into some tips and tricks for building the 2025-2026 Rev Duo FTC starter bot, along with a few upgrades that can help you unearth even more potential in your designs this season. Think of this as a guide to help you decode some of the details, avoid common pitfalls, and maybe even uncover a few hidden gems that can help take your robot to the next level. All right, Ezra, so we have this year's starter bot, and this is actually kind of the upgraded version. Mm -hmm. But before we get into some of the tips and tricks, what, what are some things you wanted to mention off the, off the bat? Yeah, so if uh, you're using a starter kit from a previous year or an old starter bot, make sure you pick up some five millimeter hex bearing blocks. Um, they're new to the starter kit this year, and there aren't any previous ones. Also, if you've, you've ever used core plast in any of your designs, make sure to pick up some more of that too. Gotcha. And I mean, that bearing is really critical this year, not mm -hmm. only for if you're using our particular design, but if you're iterating and doing anything else, those high speeds really require that bearing usage. Let's, I guess, go into some of the building. So in terms of building the, the, the base starter bot, not the upgraded model, what are some things that you, you would point out being a little tricky or maybe some things we need to, to watch out for in, in attempting to build yourself? Yeah, there's a couple of tricky components here. The first thing I would like to mention is lap corner brackets. That's these, uh, these brackets here on the sides. There's two holes and then on the short side, there's one hole. If you are trying to screw in the shorter hole and tighten it, if their middle screw nut is there, it blocks that shorter hole. So you wanna make sure to always tighten the shorter side first before you put that middle nut in. And so now in terms of this whole superstructure coming on, I saw we, we built this entire superstructure and then we brought it to the robot. Was there any challenge or difficulties with that at all? Yes, yeah, so I, this launcher side or part on top, um, they build that as their own assembly. When you slide it onto the super structure, I recommend putting them on this side first with the two vertical brackets, or excuse me, extrusion. Make sure you slide on here and then move to the one that has one vertical component and then the three. It makes it just a little bit easier, especially if you can go back and readjust anything. Um, and if you always, it's always easier if you have extra hands. Like if you have a buddy that can come help you with this, it's, it's nice to have extra hands, get those nuts and screws just right so they slide into the extrusion a little bit better. And I, I did notice, you know, we talked about these flap wheels in some of the walkthrough, but these flap wheels are, are cut quite a bit. Can you walk us through the flap wheels and, and then what you need to do basically to get them to the, be this size? Yeah, absolutely. So there are marks on the flap wheel where you can cut them. They're a variable. In this instance, they are a little bit shorter than the shortest mark. Um, so I imagine, I suggest just cutting them there, and then whenever you go to put them on the robot, you can adjust it then to make sure that it has the proper clearance for you. So also, we're using a servo, mm -hmm. and I always say, like, we're using a servo, we need to basically program it, set it up right. In this case, since it's generally spinning the entire time, you don't really need to worry about the servo horn attachment, but what about programming the servo? Yeah, so the, by default, the Smart Robot Servo comes in the Angular Servo mode. You can use the Smart Robot Servo Programmer, to change it to continuous, so it gets that continuous rotation as an agitator. And that's really important to do kind of before, you can do that in, in theory, like right right away before you actually plug it all in and get it all set up. Now with the servo, you got that programmed, let's talk a little bit about the wiring management here. Um, I, I know this is the upgraded version and we'll go into another little detail soon, but do you have any suggestions about wire management and, and how to keep everything kind of tidy? Yeah, we have several rotating components here. We have the, uh, the intake and the flywheel itself. Make sure you keep those cables as far away from any sort of moving bits as possible, especially fast moving ones. Um, we have them running down the side just as far away as possible, keep them clean and clear. Make sure that your switch cable and bracket is easily accessible and keep those wires safe. Yeah, and JT mentioned to us already about the, the hook and loop being here to keep mm -hmm. that battery in place but I think everything else is, is pretty straightforward and it gives you a lot of space here to kind of work with and kind of tidy up your wires. Is, is there any tricky wires that really are coming across or is just really the drive motors on the other side of the robot, right? Yep, the, uh, running, running the drive motors underneath, keep them out of the way is, is best and they're the trickiest ones, the first ones away. So let, let's, let's start talking about the launcher because really the setup of this and, and the tweaking of it, getting it dialed in is really one of the trickiest parts. So in terms of uh, adjustments, what, what are kind of your recommendations and things that we should look for? Yeah, so as with all launchers, 
compression is pretty important. So in order to adjust the compression here to make sure you get that dialed in, there's two different things that you can do. There's the compression here. To adjust that, you'll want to loosen these two brackets on both sides of this horizontal crossbeam, and you can lift and raise that to adjust the compression as the ball comes in. To adjust the compression as the ball exits, you'll want to loosen the four screws holding the flywheel itself and slide it horizontally. Gotcha. So the ideal compression we're going for right here is about 115 millimeters. And you want to keep that consistent from about down to center all the way through. Yeah, consistent okay. compression is key. Now with kind of our compression figured out in terms of keeping that ball going through the system very evenly, I suppose, we, we come to this deflector. Now JT mentioned previously about this deflector. What can you tell us about this? And, and, and again, just kind of walking through, get, adjusting this, getting this right, what do we need to know? So there's two ways you could adjust this. Well, there's actually several ways you can adjust this. It's a variable quite a bit. Two important things I would just keep in mind that is set is when adjusting, you can adjust it here with the angle. Uh, you can also adjust the angle of these brackets up here as well as the exit of the deflector. Mm -hmm. So you can slide these in and out and then adjust that final bit up the top with those two. And why would you want to do that to some degree? Like what, what would that help you do? Yeah, so the, the tighter this angle is, you'll get more of a shallow shot. Uh, it generally goes farther, but not quite as high. But if you have it a little further back, it'll pop a little higher and you can get a much shorter shot, maybe a little bit closer. So if you want to take your starter bot and start kind of launching further away, you, you actually want to have a little bit more curve there so it kind of deflects it, kind of launches it more towards that goal from that farther distance. Yeah. Another aspect of improving your launcher and kind of adjusting it is in code. And on docs.revrobotics.com, we're going to have a bit of a walkthrough on the PID tuning mm -hmm. to get this to be exactly what you want and for it to be consistent every time, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. PID will help keep those shots a little more consistent, um, exactly what you want, help you do a little more adjustments in code. Perfect. Okay, so as, as with every year, we have a few components that always need that special touch. What are some things that you want to make sure that teams know? Yeah, so on the drivetrain, here with this drivetrain, it uses our ultra-planetary system. Uh, it's important to note whenever you're tidying those, uh, putting that ultra-planetary system together, there are six screws mm -hmm. on the outside of this gearbox. You want to make sure those are tight, but not too tight. Because you, you over-tighten them, the gearbox will bind, and you won't have as great a performance as you like. Well, and always, you, you always have some shaft collars of, involved. Mm -hmm. And if you lose those little set screws, you can always just use a standard hex head screw. There are quite a few mainly in the shooting section and with, with the potential of vibration, I guess you really should make sure that those are tight and keep them tight, that kind for of sure, thing. For sure. Is there anything else about the lock collars that you would mention? Yeah, so on the flywheel, there are three. It helps with keep some vibration down if you put those set screws on alternating sides. It just helps the balance of the, the flywheel itself. Now that's a really good tip. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so let's like progress into some upgrades. Before I mention the really obvious, there's always a side of control. And with this robot, since you have shooting and, and, and loading and even needing to agitate, I assume that effectively two game pads would make a lot of sense and having two different controllers, basically, so two different drivers to kind of separate that system. So you have one that's focused on positioning the robot, one that's kind of focused on the launching side of the robot. And uh, we do have some code available. So if you want to go down that path, and or just change the scheme of the gamepad control for how your drive style and how your driver best drives the robot, um, that's absolutely something that you can do. The obvious thing in the room with this upgraded robot is the mechanum wheels. Can you kind of walk us through that? Yeah, so this is our mechanum drivetrain kit. We've upgraded the, the starter bot, put it on top of that drivetrain. It gives it a little more mobility, you know, it has the ability to strafe. It has four motors now instead of just the two driving it. The Important things to remember when you upgrade it to the mechanical drive chain, there are brackets on the back side that were the 90 degree brackets. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure to switch those to the inside corner brackets and let you mount those correctly on the back side. Okay. Okay. So a few adjustments. Obviously, if you're, if you're not wanting to buy the whole drive train case, but you do need two motors, you need 90 degree mm -hmm. ultra 90s, and then the, the mechanical wheel set. In order to do that, I'm assuming you're going to need to do something else here, which I spotted. Mm -hmm. So walk us through what we need to do to kind of integrate the mechanum into our robot. Yeah, so 
We have the Rev Expansion Hub down here at the bottom. We have a little hidden at the moment. It uh, gives you those extra four motor ports. You will need to run the four motors on the drive mechanical drivetrain. It also gives you a few extra things in there in case you want to use any sensors. So having that expansion hub really does unlock more. Like we've mentioned before, a ground intake would be a fantastic thing. We decided not to do it with our upgraded version. However, we do have a lot of space here to come up with some kind of system of pulling off the floor, which would help in, in, in speeding up your, your game and your scoring. The mechanic wheels really, and that drivetrain really does help with lining up and aiming and, and getting that shot from different positions, as well as even collecting the artifacts, having that drive allows you to really maneuver a little bit better. Yeah, so also whenever you're mounting the launcher onto the mechanical drivetrain, we started on the front and slid it on. If you do that, make sure you remove the switch cable and bracket. It hangs real low and you could, it might bump in the way on that. Um, another thing, important thing to note, we do have code for the starter bot on our website for you with Mechanum Drivetrain. It's integrated, it's hopefully it's get you all easy to going. One thing to point out is that you will have to make your own configuration file for it because it uses an expansion hub. All right, and the other thing that's really different about this robot is it's clear. Yeah. What's going on there? <laughs> yeah, so we've used our one millimeter polycarb. It gives it a little more rigidity. You can see inside the robot now, so you can see how many artifacts you have in your hopper left each launch. And what color they are, too. And what color they are, yeah. yes. We only use two sheets of polycarb for this, and you'll be able to mount it and just mount it, connect it one spot right here underneath. So the one thing I did notice, Ezra, is these channels in here are still coroplast. Can you talk yeah. to me a bit about that? Yeah, so you could try to make those with polycarb, but the important thing we're using these, these coroplast channels for is to keep the ball centered. And because of that, you want them to be thicker. Gotcha. And you could stack up some polycarb, but the core plus is probably just a little bit easier to do that with. This plate is kind of your bumper for your gate lever. This could be anything though, right? Yeah, absolutely. We just use core plus to keep it looking nice, but you could use any, any flat component at your disposal. Going beyond this upgrade, you know, intake, floor intake would be fantastic. The other thing that I'm curious about is, is there any way to do indexing or, or at least tracking what color artifact you have? Yeah, so we do have a, a color sensor that you could use. Um, there's a couple of great points that you can mount to it. If you do have an intake, you could incorporate that as well. But yeah, that would be a one way to do that. So in continuing like maintenance on this robot and, and as you go through competition, what are some things to watch out for? Yeah, so for, for maintenance, I would highly suggest making sure all your screws are tight, particularly your, your shaft collars, make sure those are nice and tight. Uh, with a flywheel, there's lots of vibration sometimes. Make sure that all those shaft collars are tight. The, Launcher wheel itself, we've noticed that some artifacts can wear on it. Make sure to keep that clean, it's nice and grip. Thanks for joining us as we unearth some helpful tips and upgrades for this year's starter bot. You'll find links in the description that lead straight to our documentation. But if you need help along the way, don't hesitate to reach out to our customer success team at support at RevRobotics.com. We can't wait to see what artifacts of creativity your team uncovers this season. Good luck and have a fantastic year. Always just like, Pew!